Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Joe, the blood and guts on the front porch look disgusting. Great job! Thank you, honey, and I've actually saved my most traumatizing work for right here in this living room, because underneath those sheets, I am building the most blood-curdling, terrifying mechanical monster this neighborhood, no, actually all of Northeast Toledo has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Is this about those kids last year that looked at your decorations and went, yo, check out the douche lantern I don't care what those kids think, all right? And after they see what's under there, this year, they'll be peeing in their pants. Oh, good. That's just what the front porch is missing, the pungent scent of fear pee. <laughs> so when are you going to unveil this super scary creation of yours? Yeah, don't, don't say it like that. Say what? Like what? Yeah, super scary. Like, <laughs> you just put quotes around it. Like, you don't think I can actually scare people. Oh, look, I know you can scare people, OK? I've seen you talk to smokers in restaurants. <laughs> so uh, when do I get to look under that? All right, OK. Stand over here. Ready? Meet. Scary Larry, huh? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Prepare to be terrified. I'm going to... What? You're gonna what? Yeah, you're right, Joe. The suspense is terrifying. I'm gonna hack you to bits. The, 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 the hatchet's supposed to go up and then swoosh down. Batteries must be dead. Well, maybe next time you should get undead batteries. You like that doorbell, don't you? I love the doorbell! <laughs> Dr. Radler. Hello, Mel. Uh, Joe, this is Dr. Radler, my gynecologist, who's here at our house for some reason. Nice to meet you. Yeah, same here. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mind the hatchet. I'm actually just holding it for a friend. <laughs> so, why the house call? Yeah. Is, uh, Mel okay? Oh, yes. It's nothing to worry about. It's not a professional call. Just a little catch-up between women. Just because I've seen your cervix doesn't mean we can't be friends. Just to be clear, I don't need to see your cervix in order to be friends. I'm gonna get out of here before this conversation gets weird. That's too late, though. Mel, it's time you knew. I'm not a real gynecologist. What? Wait, 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 wait. So that wasn't actually an IUD? That's not important. I beg to differ! I've been watching over you in various guises ever since you were a teenager. But now it's time you knew the truth. Mel Burke, you are a great and powerful witch. <laughs> Me? I guess you're stuck with me. I'm a witch, like a witch witch, like a uh, cackle cackle riding on a broomstick, warts on the nose. Well, nowadays, most witches have wart reduction surgery, but yes, you are a powerful witch. The adventures of your youth are retold time and time again, mostly on Saturday afternoons. Oh, I get it. This is some kind of Halloween prank. Mel, this is no prank. As a teenage girl, you grew up in the witch world, the other realm. You grew up under my care. I'm a witch, too. I'm 300 years old. Well, you look fantastic. I moisturize. But let's not talk about how beautiful I am. Years ago, a dark force infiltrated our world. For your own safety, we erased your memories and placed you here in unassuming Toledo, Ohio, under the identity of Mel Burke, an average Midwestern woman. Average? Have you seen me run downstairs in heels? I'm amazing. <laughs> but now you and your powers are needed, for evil has overtaken the other realm. The Dark Lord has risen and chaos reigns! <laughs> Dr. Rattler, honey. You know, I know sometimes doctors like to get into the free prescription samples and go a little poo-poo crazy pants, so, um... What do you say we call 911 and check you into rehab or get you on a reality show or something? Does this look cuckoo crazy pants to you? No, this sparkly cell phone makes your whole story believable. We don't have much time. Everything you need is in here. In this cell phone? It's a spell phone. Use this app to open the ebook of incantations. <laughs> Read it thoroughly, for it could save your very life. Mel? Uh... I'm not gonna ask how on earth you keep going through so many C batteries. But uh, when you use the last one, can you please put it on the shopping list so we know to get more? 
Joe, I'm kind of dealing with a very important house call here. Sorry for the interruption, Dr. Rutherford. Where did she go? Dr. Rutherford was just here. She's not here now. She just told me the most bizarre thing. Apparently, I'm a witch and I'm needed to save the other realm. A witch, huh? Mm -hmm. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Oh, you know, she didn't say. Yeah? Well, I hope you're a bad, bad witch. <laughs> Where'd you get the new cell phone? Dr. Radler gave it to me. It's a book of spells, apparently. You know, you might want to look around for a new gynecologist. <laughs> look, honey, I gotta go to the store. I gotta pick up some more batteries. Get Scary Larry working here before the kids start to trick or treat. You need anything? Uh, better candy than you usually get? Raisins are nature's candy. <laughs> and that's why people throw nature's eggs at our door. Hello, Mel. Are you ready to cast a spell? Wow, Dr. Radler went all out. Okay, I can play along with the doctor's joke. Um, levitate the couch. Your spell will not be successful without the proper intention and gesture. Oh, jeez. Okay, levitate couch. <laughs> gesture, poor. Intention level, weak. Now, maybe I'm getting a bad signal. This might be a lousy witch coverage area. Oh, yeah, I've only got two brooms. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Ryder, nice costume. You're rocking Halloween old school, peanut style. Where are you two headed? Ooh. Ryder said he's not speaking until after he gets back from this party we're going to. He's very committed to his character. Ooh. That is so sweet. Wait a second. Were those my thousand thread count sheets? You know what? He is going to be a ghost when he gets home. So, what do you think of my costume? Oh, yeah, it's great. What are you? You can't tell? Uh, don't give me the eyebrow. Okay, I'm really trying here. Um, oh, I got it. You're a rat princess. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a sexy cat. Oh, now I see it. No, you don't. Ugh, stupid cheap mail order costume. It's not sexy and it's barely a cat. No, oh, honey, you look very nice. I do not. You don't really care, do you? Of course I care, sweetheart. I care a great deal. I mean, I want you to be the most realistic cat there ever was. Oh, my God, what did you do to me? I don't know. I'm due. I'm due. Control Z. How did this happen? How the hell did you turn me into a cat? I don't know. Intention and gesture. What are you, some kind of magician? No, I'm a... a witch. <laughs> then do whatever that was again and change me back right now. I have a party to go to tonight. All right, don't worry, okay? I'm gonna change you back. Oh, you're so soft. <laughs> uh, okay, I just have to find the right spell to transform you. Oh, no. I have to go to the bathroom. What? No, 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 we don't have a litter box. Then let me outside. Well, uh, okay, fine, but don't run off. We don't know if you're fixed, and I don't want to find out when you're popping out kittens in my closet. <laughs> This is humiliating. Okay. I promise, no matter what you fall off of or how well you play piano, I will not post it on YouTube. <laughs> oh! Now, do you believe me? Yes, I believe you. I'm a witch from the far side. The other realm. Whatever. <laughs> Look, now I just need to know how to turn Lennox back into a person. You can't. You won't have your full powers until you defeat the Dark Lord. Well, how do I do that? I don't know. Well, where is he? I don't know. You know, you're really not bringing a whole lot to the party here, lady. The Dark Lord has overtaken the Witch Realm and is now poised to conquer the mortal world as well. He wishes to destroy you because you are the only obstacle to his supremacy. I feel his presence is near. Wait, what? What, the Dark Lord's coming here? What does he look like? He takes many forms and guises. So he's like the Meryl Streep of evil? <laughs> he once was Meryl Streep. You know, I bet it wasn't Mamma Mia. Well, I'm back. In a minute! Look, Dr. Radler... Uh, I wish he'd stop doing that. <laughs> oh, Joe, I'm so glad you're here. Hey, you want to hear something weird? Do you know when I got home, there was some stray black cat taking a pee on the front lawn? <laughs> I chased it off, but it was really weird. Before it left, it looked at me just like this. I swear I've seen that look somewhere before. I just can't place it. That was Lennox. I'm a witch, and I turned Lennox into a cat by accident. Ooh. <sighs> spooky. Someone's in the Halloween spirit. I like that. I don't blame you for not believing me. I barely believe it myself. 
Hey, listen, honey, I'd love to chat with you, but I gotta get Scary Larry up and working because the kids are already outside trick-or-treating, okay? And Val, let me in! Keep your fur on, Lennox! <laughs> Run, kids! Save yourself! There's a crazed killer on the loose! I'm going to hack you to bits! <laughs> That's lame. That's not lame. You were scared. You know it. Nah. Fine. Whatever. Here, take your Halloween candy and go. Black licorice? Gross. You have to play seven steps for this? Hey, it's classic Halloween candy. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, I'm not even doing that. That's weird, how's he, how's he doing that? Run, kids, save yourself! I miss this? No way! Oh, what's going on? I don't, I don't, I don't know, it's Scary Larry, it's like he's possessed or something. Oh, it's the Dark Lord, he's come over to this world to get me! It's not always about you, Mel. Hey, you're a witch, right? Why don't you do something? Cast a little spell. All right, don't freak out, don't freak out. Uh, uh, Zither, Zoroastrian, zombies. Oh, here's something. Maka like a high, like a hiney ho. <laughs> Fail. You know, tell all your friends we have black licorice. On you, monkey fighter. That was amazing. Oh, I defeated the Dark Lord. You. Uh, I was the one with the lethal licorice. Yeah. You, me, same difference. The important thing is, he's gone. Yeah, you're right. And now, it's time to take out the trash. Oh, wait a minute. I can do better than that. Hold on. Okay, you ready? Here it is. It's trash night. <laughs> and I'm taking it out. Wait a minute, I can do better. Okay, I can just do better. get rid of it. I have to go find Lennox. Lennox! Here, Nisi, 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 Nisi! Must kill. Must destroy witch. Must avoid personal pronouns. <laughs> Lennox, this is you, right? Yes, and put me down. You're squishing like five of my boobs. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay, let's try to change you back. Ugh, you're putting me on the counter where we put food? Do you know where I've been? Oh, stop complaining. I'm trying to figure out how to turn you back to your regular self. Okay, restore Lennox to her human form. Sorry, you have spellbook. Right. You need to upgrade to the full version to use that spell. Hurry up, Aunt Mel. The party already started, and I've got to do my hair. Excuse me. I've just been busy, you know, trying to protect all of humanity from the Dark Lord. Who's the Dark Lord? Evil personified, the devil incarnate, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I'm just gonna do this the old-fashioned way and hope I'm not violating any copyright laws. Bippity boppity boo. Yes, yes you are! Oh, but you um might want to do a little waxing before you go out. <gasps> oh no! What did you do to me? Uh, uh, this doesn't come off. I'm like half cat, half human mutant. Oh. Mel. Hey, well, where are you going? I'm going to do some stress eating. <laughs> oh, butter. <laughs> what are you upset about? I'm the one who can't turn my niece back. Look at her. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, more trick-or-treaters. Lennox, will you get the door? How? I don't have opposable thumbs. You're a talking cat. Figure it out. <laughs> Must have victory. Oh, tell me about it. Uh, you want a glass of wine? I think we deserve it after killing that Dark Lord. Dark Lord stands before you. Ah! You're the Dark Lord! In searching for Teenage Witch season after season, must destroy. Aha! 
Dark Lord is not a vampire. That's for vampires, too. Those are scallions, anyway. Really? Are you sure? My maple cabinets. Those are custom. That's it, bitch. Get out of my man. We're getting a lot of complaints about the black licorice. Must destroy witch. Lennox, it's a dark lord. <sighs> Where? Inside Joe. Oh, no, well, well, can't you just, like, use a spell or something? No, my powers don't work on him. Um, oh! But there's a magic you've had that's always been more powerful. The magic of love. You're kidding me, right? No, love is the strongest power on Earth. Just, just reach out to him. The man you love is still inside of there somewhere. Just, come on, you've got to try it. Okay, okay, it's worth a shot. Joe? <laughs> Sweetie? Pudding pie? <laughs> <gasps> Joe! I know you're in there. I find your way out, sweetheart. <laughs> You. You're doing it. Come on, you can beat him, Joe. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh, here. Let me help you. Get out of him, you beast. Actually, that was all me. Oh, sorry. Whew. Man, this guy's strong. Tony, this guy works out as much as I do. <laughs> The only way for me to destroy him is to destroy myself, Mel. No, Joe, don't do it. I have to. It's the only way that I can save you. <laughs> it's the only way. <gasps> I love you, Mel. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Joe! No, this can't be! Uh, that was amazing. He sacrificed himself to save us all from the Dark Lord. Oh. My sweet, noble Joe. I can't believe you're gone forever. Back from dead. Oh! I'm kidding, that's just me. Oh. Oh. Joe, that was amazing. Wow, you're the one with the special powers. Yeah, I tell you, it's a good thing I was here. <laughs> Otherwise, I never would have been able to defeat myself. <laughs> Couldn't have done it without you, though, baby. Oh, well, now that we... Joe defeated the Dark Lord. I can focus all my attention on restoring you to your human form. Um, actually, can I keep this look for now? I'll have a great shot at winning the costume contest at the party. You can just change it back when I get home, okay? Bye. Hey, be safe, have fun. Yeah, and don't go crossing anyone's path. Well done. Look, look, someday you're gonna do that to someone in a concealed carry state, and you're gonna regret it. Congratulations, Mel. You defeated the Dark Lord and saved the other realm as well as this one. Your powers are now fully restored. You are once again the great witch that you were. Really? Try it. That move is taken. Oh, okay. Uh, turn Joe into the most desirable man alive. Well, that's odd. It didn't work. Yes, it did. He's already the most desirable man I know, but now with ravioli. Yeah. And, uh, take a peek in there. Oh, no magic is needed for that area. That's perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. Look in your pants pocket. You have two tickets to Justin Timberlake at the Toledo Hollywood Bowl. What? Now I have it all. And now, Mel, you may take your place as a leader in the realm of witches. Oh, Joe, we're gonna be like witch royalty. Oh, maybe we can party with Harry Potter and Hermione. <laughs> I'm sorry, the other realm has a strict anti-immigration policy when it comes to... mortals. I don't like the way she just said that. It's your choice, Mel. If you stay here, you will lose your powers and remain a mortal forever. So, no more witchy-witchy stuff, you know, like... No, that all goes away. So what do you choose? Well, I mean, are you kidding? This is a no-brainer. You're willing to give up all your witch powers? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. What's the use of all those other powers if I don't have the power of love? Well, all right, you may stay, but your magic will be gone. 
and all memory of these events will be erased from you both. I'll miss you. Shazam! Oh. Oh. What? I feel weird. Ooh, I feel weird too. What time is it? It's 8.30. It's, it's already 8.30? What happened to the night? <gasps> oh, trick-or-treaters. Good, because, you know, tonight's been so boring. Yeah. Hey, you know, I really love what you've done with the decorations in here. I mean, I love this fake cleaver. <laughs> I didn't do that. I thought that you did that. I didn't do that. Whoa. And Mel, I need you to change me back right now. I'm sick and place my furry ass. And Mel! <laughs> Went to look at neighborhood Halloween decorations. Okay, fine. I'll wait. First place, in your furry face. Shut up, writer! Ooh. Oh, honey, check this out. Made it in the sixth grade. Pasta claws. Aw, so talented. And now for the finishing touch. What? What are you doing? Putting my silver star on top of the tree. What are you doing? I'm putting my angel on top of the tree. Honey, my great grandmother made this angel as a child in Italy out of corn husks and sun dried tomatoes. <laughs> I think it deserves a top spot in the tree. Uh, trust me, my silver star has much more significance than that. Okay, it was my great great grandmother's, and it's the only thing that the Burks passed down from one generation to the next. Yeah, well, that and a high tolerance for alcohol. <laughs> There's a beautiful story behind this star, and I think once you hear it, you'll agree that it's the greatest Christmas story of all time. The greatest Christmas story of all time? Have you heard the one about the little baby in the manger? Okay, second greatest. It all began with my great-great-grandmother, Melanie, over 100 years ago. Morning, dear Elizabeth. My, you look lovely. If only I could capture an image of you and send it immediately to my closest friends to admire. Oh, Miss Melanie, you're such a dreamer. <laughs> Look at this decorating technique I discovered. You simply pin the paper snowflakes over the holes in the curtains, and suddenly your home looks festive and not so poor. <laughs> How it saddens me that this is what has become of Burkwood. I thought my father's invention of the horse's carriage would set us up for life, but it went nowhere. Perhaps some sort of a motor would have helped. <laughs> Well, still, you've given me such a wonderful life here. Tell me, why did you take me in when I was just an orphan wrestling a fellow street urchin for a meat pie? Helping less fortune is the right thing to do. And of all the urchins in the gutter, you were the cutest one. Seriously? Melanie and Elizabeth at Perkwood? Hey, don't interrupt her. I'll find somewhere else to shove this silver star. Would that free up the top of the tree for my angel? Yes, you're stuck with me. I can't believe this is our good china. It looks like the inside of President Garfield's chamber pot. <laughs> if I may, you seem a little out of sorts over this dinner with Alistair. Well, everything must be perfect tonight so that he will propose. Propose? But you don't love him. What's love got to do with it? Without his family's fortune, the creditors will foreclose on Berkwood in two days. I must do something to save our beloved home. Melanie, are you there? Shh, father must not know of our dire state. Child, I am filled with Christmas cheer. Well, Christmas cheer and scotch. <laughs> well, it is so good to see you smiling. Yes, it must be good to see at all. <laughs> Tell me, child, are you smiling? Well, of course I am. <laughs> I find Christmas a sad time. It was 10 years ago this very night that your sainted mother died and I went blind from grief. Who knew <laughs> that too much crying could cause a man to lose his sight? I assure you, there was nothing else I was doing too much of that could have caused this blindness. <laughs> 
Strange, I don't hear the servants bustling about. Oh, uh, that's because all the servants are nocturnal now. Yeah, they, uh, work while you're asleep. Oh, so like elves. Exactly. <laughs> Miss Melanie? Oh, Josiah, your arms. I mean, you're here. <laughs> Miss Melanie, I have some very upsetting news. And after you hear it, you may wish to sit. Of course, that'll require you to put on your sitting dress, so... You know what? I'll just tell you. The butcher has refused to sell us any meat for the Christmas roast. <gasps> Why on earth would the butcher refuse our money? After all, we are the richest family in the county. Colonel Burke, I didn't see you there. Welcome to my world. Uh, Elizabeth, why don't you take Father out to his chair by the duck pond that he loves so much? Oh, yes, of course, because we still have a duck pond with many, many healthy ducks. Oh, I can hear them now. Quack, quack, quack. My ducks. <sighs> no roast? But tonight's dinner must be perfect or Burke will be shuttered forever. It breaks my heart to see you so upset, Miss Melanie. As God is my witness, I will do whatever it takes to find you that roast for tonight's meal. And then I shall cook it. But how will you have time to prepare the meal? And won't you be too busy looking after the horses? I'm afraid we sold off all the horses. Well, except for Silver Bells, because, you know, he's just too old and frail. Oh, Silver Bells. Remember as children when we would sneak off for a midnight gallop? How could I forget? I should go start cooking dinner. I'm going to take this chair, if you don't mind, as we are short on firewood. Oh, now I understand. He is the one you really love. Who? Josiah, the handsome stable hand who I grew up with and have so much in common with? Well, someone treat this one with some static electricity because that is just madness. Uh-huh. You found a roast. How did you convince the butcher to extend us credit? It's not for you to worry about, young lady. Very well, then. I'll just go throw a blanket over Silver Bells. No, that won't be necessary, as Silver Bells will be quite warm tonight. You mean? You won't reveal the secret ingredient for tonight's meal, will you? Nay. Nay? <laughs> Those were Silver Bell's last words. <laughs> it's just that I would have done anything to make sure that this Christmas feast was exactly the way Miss Melody wanted it to be. Well, don't you know why tonight's dinner is so important to Melanie? She wants Alistair to propose. Is this true? Yes, but she doesn't love him. You must stop it. I have a great idea. I'll tell Alistair that I'm a vegetarian. That's a new diet that all the poor people are doing. <laughs> oh, phew, you found a roast. Listen, Miss Melanie, before Alistair arrives... Yes, Josiah? There's something you need to know. Oh, Alistair's here. Oh, how do I look? Does this bustle make my bottom look enormous? <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. Then I'm off to greet my future husband. Mel, I have to say, I find one part of that story hard to believe. Which part? The whole thing. <laughs> hey, got our last minute Christmas shopping done. And Ryder wrestled a small child over a Highlander toy. And one. <laughs> Oh, 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 can I put the silver star on top of the tree? Uh, no, actually, we haven't decided which ornament is going to be going on top of the tree. Your Aunt Mel's trying to convince me this uh, silver star holds some special place in Burke family history. Really? I've never heard that. Well, then you two should sit down and hear the story about your great-great-grandmother. No, wait, she was my great-great-grandmother, which would make her your great-great-great... Whatever. She was awesome, okay? <laughs> Here, Alistair, sit next to me. Oh, boy, it would be my pleasure, Miss Melanie. Here's your roast, sir. <laughs> Tell me, Alistair, have you ever seen grander Christmas decorations? Actually, I have. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> you must say something to Melanie. She can't marry Alistair. Ah, look at him. He's way too shy to ask for a hand.
Well, Melanie might ask him. She's a bold woman on the cusp of a new century. The other day, she wore a dress that showed almost her entire ankle. Oh. Uh, her bare ankle? <laughs> I'll be banking that image for later. My, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. The zipper hasn't been invented yet, so I don't know what that gesture means. Well, that was quite a feast. Oh, that? Well, that's what we we don't care what people think. <laughs> it is beautiful out here. Mm, and it all belongs to me and whomever I marry. Well, just the other day, I was saying to my husband, oh, did I say husband? I meant father. I don't have a husband. Perhaps I will someday. <laughs> Have a father? No, silly, a husband. <laughs> Tell me, Josiah, what are Melanie and Alistair up to on the veranda? Well, at the moment, sir, they are having polite intercourse. <laughs> Describe their intercourse to me. <laughs> well, sir, right now, Miss Melanie is laughing as only she can. There she playfully tosses her hair and her eyes shine so bright. Oh, do me a favor, good Josiah. Laugh as she is laughing. <laughs> Sir, I don't, I, I don't want I, to... I, I, that. I am your boss. <laughs> yes, sir. Um... <sighs> as though you're gonna kiss me. I do. Oh, no, I wouldn't presume to do such a thing, ma'am. Well, I wouldn't mind if you did. Not that I know much about kissing, but from what I've seen at the Magic Lantern show, it goes a little something like this. <laughs> what, what, what is happening now? I could tell you, sir, but then I'd have to gouge out my eyes, rip off my ears, and cut out my tongue. Well, in that case, skip it. Wow. Well, if we were husband and wife, we could do that every Sunday. Really? Th then let's get married. <gasps> oh, Alistair, say it again. But this time, while picking up my handkerchief. OK, now bend that knee. Yep, right there. OK, and now say it. Melanie, will you marry me? <gasps> oh, Alistair, this is such a surprise. <laughs> What are you doing? Putting away leftovers. Silver Bells was a fine old stallion. Should last us the rest of the winter. No, I mean, what are you doing here? You have to tell Melanie how you feel about her. Otherwise, she'll wind up with the wrong man. And when you die, they'll write upon your gravestone. Here lies Josiah. He died sad and alone, but he had his pride. So there's that. You know what? You're right. You're pretty wise for an urchin. Well, I was first in my class at urchin school. I'm gonna go tell Miss Melanie the truth. Alistair has asked me to marry him, and I said yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is wonderful news. Josiah, break out our finest champagne. <laughs> That's something I learned to do on the continent. <laughs> we should be married tonight. I will ride home and retrieve my father and the young vicar from our parish. And then you and I can do some more of that kissing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Congratulations, Miss Melanie. Melanie, you must be thrilled. She's behind you. So sorry. <laughs> dear, dear, oh, my child. Why? Are those tears on your face? Yes, Father, tears of joy and nothing else. For I'm soon to be Mrs. Alistair, whatever his last name is, he's rich. <laughs> <laughs> Josiah, thank you again for all your help tonight. This proposal wouldn't have happened without you. You're welcome, Miss Melanie. Although, don't expect my assistance on your honeymoon now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Miss Melanie, since Burkwood is now saved, I, I want you to know this will 
be my last day in your service. Well, don't I get a fortnight's notice? If you were paying me, yes. <laughs> but before I go, I actually want to give you some. I forged this with my bare hands. I thought maybe you could hang it on the Christmas tree to remember me by. Oh, what a beautiful silver star. <sighs> Pales in comparison to the lady who's holding it. Now, if you'll excuse me, uh, I'm gonna go shovel the rest of the manure before I leave. Well, don't go. Don't go? Shovel the rest of the manure? Well, you're right. You should probably go shovel the manure. Because I don't want to. Thank you, Josiah. Oh, where did you get that pretty star? Josiah made it for me. He has taken his leave tonight of Berkwood forever. Josiah means a great deal to you, doesn't he, Miss Melanie? Why? Because we spent our idyllic youth playing country physician? <laughs> Pish posh. <laughs> Perhaps some night air will help dry these tears. I'm not caring. I hear faint chimes from across the town square. <laughs> that means it's Christmas. Miss Melanie, look at that bright star. Perhaps that's the same star the wise men saw. Perhaps, if you wish upon a star. Great Caesar's ghost! My side has been restored! It's a Christmas miracle! Oh, Father, is it really true? Yes, I can see. And I can see in your eyes a deep sorrow. Because she doesn't love Alistair, she is in love with another. Just, child, are you back on the street? Well, who is it? It doesn't matter. I must marry Alistair, otherwise Berkwood is lost. Why? We are wealthy. Oh, Father, I'm afraid not. Look around you. Oh, dear God, this place is a dump. <laughs> but with Alistair's family money, all will be restored. My dear, you cannot sacrifice your happiness to save a house. You must marry the man you love. Oh, Father, do you really mean that? I do. What means most to me in this world is your happiness, my child. <laughs> Although it wouldn't kill you to pick up a broom. <laughs> Miss Milney, I'm gonna be going now. I've made my bed. Into this stylish straw hat in case I get a job on a riverboat. Nice hat. I'll be sorry to see you go. Wait a minute. Colonel, you can see? Yes, it's a Christmas miracle. I'll tell you about it later. Farewell, Josiah. Farewell, Miss Melanie. Uh-huh. I know that look. That is the look of love. Yes. Yes, it's true. I have always loved Josiah. You have? I can no longer deny that I love this dirty, smelly, destitute stable hand. He was also very handsome and kind. Perhaps lead with that the next time. <laughs> oh, Miss Melanie, I've loved you ever since the first time that you and I rode silver bells together. If this is to be your bride, Alistair, I think we may have a problem. Is this the chaste angel you've been going on about, my son? It is. Pardon me, stable boy, but I believe that belongs to me. Oh, uh, I belong to no one. I am my own woman and I make my own choices. I may not be able to vote. I may not be able to hold office. I may not be able to sign a contract or open a bank account. You also can't own property or smoke tobacco in public. Thank you, sister. <laughs> but I can choose the man I love. That's right, and she loves me, so I think it's time that you move along. Alistair. So, am I to perform a wedding ceremony or not? Either way, I was told there would be dinner. <laughs> I propose we settle who gets the lady with the modern fashion duel. Excuse <gasps> me. I suppose I'm gonna get one of those, right? Nope. <laughs> a real gentleman, I see. Stop them yours, father! <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't put his throat, Alistair. And don't get blood on your shirt. Your mother will be vexed. <laughs> I can't believe they're fighting over me. This is absolutely flattering. Stop! That mark! How did you get that? Sir, I was born this way. My eldest son had such a mark. He was stolen from us as a babe by traveling fortune tellers. I was raised by traveling fortune tellers and never told them my true birth. That means you two are brothers. Brother? Brother! <laughs> Father! At last! When do I get to meet Mother? As soon as she returns from following that heartthrob John Philip Sousa on his concert tour. <laughs> Josiah, as my eldest son, you are now heir to my Tire fortune. Primogeniture in your face. <laughs> well, well, that sucks. Well, this means we can be married and Berkwood can be saved. Oh, and true love is one out. My lady, would you do me the honor of being my wife? A thousand times? Yes. <laughs> Save it for the ceremony, you two. Young vicar, would you please get my daughter hitched? It would be my joy and pleasure to join these two in holy matrimony as soon as I get something to eat. I have a great idea. We could ride silver bells together again, but this time down the aisle. My dear, there's something I should tell you about silver bells. <laughs> it can wait. <laughs> So that night, Melanie and Josiah were married beneath this very silver star. Aw, what a romantic load of crap. Wait, I don't get it. What's the name of this movie again? You believe me, don't you, Joe? Not even a little. But you know what, honey? I gotta tell you, the fact that you went to such incredible lengths to make sure that this star gets the top spot on this tree is both what I find most annoying about you, and yet, what I love most about you. Oh, honey, letting me have my way is the best Christmas present ever. Oh, well, then I think my shopping is done. No, you still gotta buy me stuff. Even though we're coming back from the hospital, technically, we are still coming back from our wedding. And there are traditions. Which can wait. No. Mm -mm. Nope, sorry. This new husband will now carry his new wife over the threshold. But I really gotta pee. <laughs> so I won't pick you up by the bladder. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh! 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 oh here we oh. go. Okay, ready? Okay. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh. Oh. oh! You call that careful? Put me down, please. No. We're doing this. There are other thresholds in this house. <laughs> ah, yeah, ta-da! <laughs> Wasn't that romantic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta pee so bad. In 20 years, you're gonna be very happy that I just did that. No, I won't. Yeah, you will. Will not. Scratch my knee, and I got a fork stuck down there. I guess that means you're done. Oh! 
<laughs> well, get ready to love me because I just got us a full refund for our honeymoon. That's right, baby. Yeah, hotel airfare, the works, all right? And if I recall, a certain person here in the kitchen uh, laughed at me for buying trip insurance, so a latte a day. Yay for us. We're not going to Tahiti. Hey, you know what? Let's take a picture in front of the refund check and post it and make all of our friends jealous. <laughs> I know you're disappointed we can't go on the honeymoon, but I promise you, when you're up and running at 100%, I'm gonna take you on that honeymoon, okay? Along with all the exciting things that um, happened on the honeymoon. Oh, I'm not waiting another four weeks for that. Okay, I want it now. This marriage needs to be consummated. All right, let's go upstairs. No, but, but, but this is not Tahiti. This is hardly a romantic setting. Well, let's change all that, sexy mama. <laughs> Come on. Ooh, did you feel that? Did you feel that warm, tropical, romantic breeze, huh? Bring it in. Come on. Is that the smoke alarm? What is, is it? That would be the toaster. See? And that's what happens to a toaster when somebody doesn't take the crumbs out of the bottom of it. Oh, wow. That was so hot. Lecture me again, bad boy. All right, you're right. Fine. It's not important. It's just a toaster. There are way more important things, like, um, you know, how well you're doing, actually, because you have had one heck of a week. I mean, dream wedding interrupted, my daughter moving in with us. You've fallen off the roof, us having to get married in the hospital. And you know what? Through it all, sweetie, somehow you managed to maintain your sense of humor. And I look fabulous. Yeah, that goes without saying. I mean, that's why I didn't say it. But you know what we need to do right now? We need to take care of you, all right? Come on. <laughs> Bring it in. Mm. Joe, Joe, the toilet's overflowing. All I did was flush it, not my fault. Did you jiggle the handle first, honey? You gotta jiggle the handle first. Hey, I'm new here. I don't know how your toilets work. Danny, you gotta jiggle the handle first. I told you that stuff's gonna get everywhere. I'll get the plunger. The honeymoon I always dreamed of. <laughs> oh, the freaking fork! Nice view of the hills. Shh, someone might hear. Okay, but we're a couple now. That's cute couple banter. Hey, look, whatever we are, no one needs to know. Come on, let's tell them. Marco, we've been over this. Okay, if your Uncle Joe finds out, he will kill you. And if we tell my Aunt Mel, she'll tell Joe, and he will kill you. No, he won't. He was telling me this morning how glad he is to have me around. Because he thinks you stayed in town to help out, buy groceries. He thinks all you're doing is errands, not, you know, me. And have I been helpful with the... Groceries, if you know what I mean. Yes, I do. And restocking the shelves this morning. Did you like that? OK, stop it. It's just too risky to let people know. What's too risky? Where did you come from? A one night stand between Joe and my mom. But you know that. <laughs> now, tell me what's too risky. OK, no one knows this yet, but Lennox and I have psoriasis. <laughs> Really? Yes. Oh, itchy, itchy psoriasis. You know, and we're just not comfortable telling people about it. Right, Marco? That's right. We scratch each other secretly. OK, just put the groceries away. Why don't we both put them away? Then we can go back to scratching each other. I don't itch right now. Maybe we can put away a couple cans of soup, see what happens. <laughs> I need to talk. I've got a problem. Oh, me too. Paint my toes. Okay, it's about a relationship, and it's complicated. Oh, you're getting back together with Xander. So that thing at the wedding was just a little tip. I knew it. Are you kidding? Xander and I are over forever, as it should be. I mean, we were barely broken up, and he goes off and sleeps with one of his roommates. Well, you know what? I can do the same thing. So I did. Ooh, rebound fling? Those can be so hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, I bet I know who it is. You don't know him. I bet it's that Norwegian exchange student who drove you home last week. Torbit, right? Yes, Torbit. With his spicy Norwegian blood. <laughs> but here's the problem. Torbit wants to be my boyfriend out in the open, full time. And you don't think he's boyfriend material? He's not. We're just too different. But how do you tell a guy that without hurting him? Well, you just got to be honest with him. I want to, but then he takes his shirt off, and I forget what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, I am familiar with six-pack amnesia. Both kinds. <laughs> but, you know, in my personal experience, I have learned that men have feelings, too. And you can't lead them on. So break up with him? Yes. Is that what you would do? No. 
And that's how I know it's the right thing. Hey. Hey. Wait a minute. You were out by yourself? I thought you were upstairs resting. Nope. I was on a mission of love. I Ubered to the doctor and got myself this little mini. Well, look at that. It's fun size. Yeah. Fun is right, because now everything is more, mm, accessible. That's going to be very helpful. <laughs> Listen, I know how disappointed you've been about the honeymoon, OK? But I want you to know, all that has now been fixed by me for you. <laughs> Mrs. Longo. Whoa, who said I'm Mrs. Longo? Mrs. Mel, my new wife. <laughs> all right, because you were getting that romantic getaway after all. I found us an incredible last-minute honeymoon deal. Where? Incredible last-minute honeymoon deals .com. <laughs> Secluded cabins, fireplaces, panoramic views of Lake Erie. Joe, it looks so pretty, but can we really just up and go away right now? Yes, we can. Look, Ryder's gonna be at his friend's house all week because he thought we were gonna be in Tahiti. Okay, never say Tahiti unless we are standing on it. <laughs> My point is, he's taken care of. Well, what about Danny? I mean, she's brand new in the house. She doesn't even know how we use our toilets. <laughs> She's got a little bit of a trouble past. Are you sure we can leave her here unsupervised? We're not going to be leaving her unsupervised because remember when I had that security company come over here and install all those little cameras? Mm -hmm. Well, I finally downloaded the app up on my phone, so now we can check in and see what's going on in this house whenever we want. Watch this. There we go. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hi. It's us. Hey, did you put one of these in our bedroom? No. Could you? Already did, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, not only do we have the cameras, but she's also going to have two chaperones here. She's got, you know, for the brawn, Marco, and for the brains, the most responsible girl in the whole world. Lennox! <laughs> Lennox! What? <clears throat> what? Could you come down here for a second? We need to talk. Tell him you're busy. Mm. No, put your shirt on. <laughs> I'll be right there. You, that shirt never comes off again. You guys are in charge until we get back. Uh, this should be enough to cover all the meals. Aunt Mel, the only people who use cash anymore are drug dealers and the tooth fairy. <laughs> what kind of kid turns down money? Oh, I'm taking it. I'm just being snarky about it. Marco, make yourself useful. There is no other reason I'm here. <laughs> so, Danny, listen, honey, um, I left the number to the inn on the fridge. Why wouldn't I just call your cell phone? Well, you know, in case there's a meteor shower and it knocks out all the cellular transmission. Oh, well, then we'll be okay with our $40 cash until the zombies attack. <laughs> I left my painkillers upstairs. Oh, I'll get them for you. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. Oh, and I counted them. <laughs> hey, so did you break up with Torbit yet? Oh, I tried, but he took his shirt off. Yes. And for every ab, my IQ dropped 10 points. <laughs> he must be really cute. So cute. Oh. Who's cute? Oh, you are, honey. I know that. What were you guys talking about? Oh, she's seeing this boy at school, a Norwegian named Torbit. Apparently, he's really hot, but not right for the long term. Ugh, oh, miss when I was running around with Scandinavian strange. Really? That's what you say to your new husband right before we're about to leave on our honeymoon? Any hey, keys, Uncle Joe? I'm just glad she's not going out with that one. What's wrong with your nephew? Oh, women are so blind. Come on, honey, he's a player. But he seems so sweet. Yeah, like all good players do. Oh, yeah? You say that like you're the mayor of Player Town. Uh-huh. I served for two terms. Oh. Okay, look, you don't have to brag just because I had a colorful past. I'm not. I'm just telling you that, you know, when you were out having your inappropriate Nordic boyfriends, I was, uh... Well, how can I put this? Let me see. Oh, okay. I was up to here and... Ah, thanks, I got it. <laughs> look, all I'm saying is, if a hound like that ever so much as laid a hand on my precious Lennox, oh, I swear, there he is. Hey, my favorite nephew. You know, Marco, I got to tell you, man, it's been really great having you around. Hey, with my new aunt recuperating and my new cousin needing a little guidance, I'm glad to stick around as long as I can be useful. That's what family does. You know what? I think you're finally starting to grow up, man. Get in here. Come on. Hey, hey, ho, ho, hey. Oh. <laughs> you still got it. Don't ever forget it. <laughs> Lennox, we're leaving. So listen, Danny, you gotta listen to Marco and Lennox for the next three days, okay? Hey, I'll be fine. I once stayed a week by myself when my mom took off with Brett Michaels. Oh, Brett Michaels, yum. <laughs> really? Brett Michaels? Oh, I thought you said cinnamon rolls. Yum. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm a little bummed that I just got here and you guys are already going away. Aw, oh, sweetheart, we'll be back before you know it. Bye. 
Be good. Listen to them. I love you guys. Yeah, she's like, right, hey, Keith. Oh, oh, oh. Bye. I'm really gonna miss you. Bye. All right, party time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a homework party upstairs, and you're the only one invited. Oh, come on, I'm new at that school. I still got two more weeks before they know I can speak English. <laughs> homework, now. But I don't no. need to. Can I just? No. Maybe if no. I. Mm. <laughs> now that she's gone. No. Maybe... Marco? Lennox? We need to talk. As you and I struggle to define what we are to each other, you know, I believe what I am to you is neither analogous nor parallel. You're cute when you're thinky. You need to be serious. No. What I need is ketchup. <laughs> Aww. This is one of my good shirts. No, don't! Best grocery run yet. Yeah. But, um, I'm afraid that was the last time. What do you mean? I don't really want a boyfriend right now. And I guess I should have told you that before. Maybe you should have. It's just... You're so damn irresistible. I really don't know how to take that. A compliment wrapped around a put-down. It's like an insult calzone. <laughs> oh, I think I can handle three days of this. Huh? This is awesome. Look at that. We got Lakeview over here. We got uh, view of the mountains over there. But uh, the best view of all, well, that would be right here in front of me. Aw, Joe, I fully intend to have sex with you. You don't have to work so hard. No, I do it for me. No, I do like this room. Yeah, well, you know, nothing but the best for Mrs. Long. Term partner forever. Mm. <laughs> Let's take this nice and slow, huh? Mm. Screw that. It's consummating time. Oh, okay. I'm down. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. You know what? I just thought about something. This is going to be the first time that you have ever had sex with a married guy. Mm -mm. Absolutely. This is the first time I've ever done that. <laughs> Ooh, is this married man sex? Saucy. No, you had a mosquito on your butt. Look. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ow. And on you too. Oh. 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 What the? Oh. They're everywhere. You left the window open. Oh, I was trying to get some fresh air in here. Oh my. You gotta at least close the screen. Yeah. Oh great. What are you doing? You're, you're locking them in here with us now. You hear the man start killing. What do you think I'm doing, huh? Giving him high fives? You know what? Maybe this will stop him. What? Honey, that's sunscreen. Yeah, well, maybe it'll work. Oh, nice. Well, at least it won't get skin cancer. <laughs> hey, what are you... so good together. Marco, I didn't plan it this way, okay? I'm just trying to be honest with you. You and I have no future as boyfriend and girlfriend, and the sooner we both accept that... I just feel... used. There you guys are. I was yelling upstairs and nobody answered. What were you guys doing? Groceries. Scratching. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> anyway, what I was yelling about was dinner. What's happening with that? Um, oh, I think we have leftover pizza. We do, we do. I will heat some up, as I am only here to help. I should probably get some studying done. I should probably help her. I think you're just trying to avoid talking to me. Am not. <laughs> this is studying. I won't be able to concentrate on my schoolwork till I see what happens on Hooking Up Tonight. <laughs> Whoa, you're too young to watch that show. <laughs> Please. I toured with my mom in Black Sabbath. I've seen stuff that would be blocked on YouTube. <laughs> okay, then I'll watch it with you. Is that supposed to discourage me? Mm. I've never seen this show. I thought shows like this were only on the computer. We're gonna find out if Chloe's gonna stick with this guy she jumped on just for fun, but doesn't want to have a real relationship with. That sounds most intriguing. <laughs> Tell me more. Okay. 
She had a fling with this real cute guy, but doesn't think he can cut it as a boyfriend. Well, maybe she should just give this guy a chance. Is he nice to her? He's sweet. And they have chemistry. So what is this girl's problem? Well, she thinks the that The problem they... is she doesn't want to hurt him. She's not a horrible person, but she just got out of a relationship and she's not ready for a new one. <laughs> I assume. <laughs> Do you two really think you're fooling anybody? Harder. Harder! Are you sure? I don't want to hurt you. I can handle it. Oh, that's it. That's the spot. Oh, it's so good. Okay, now it's my turn. You have to do me. What? No, I'm not finished yet. Oh, come on, my hand's getting tired. Well, then use the other hand, damn it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, no, no. She's not doing it. What? You seem to be enjoying it. Yeah, well, I got close, but I just... I need calamine lotion. You need calamine? Hey, it's my turn. Come on, you have to do my back. Do yourself. <laughs> you know, it's... It's not gonna work. I just got too many muscles. Wow. That episode was especially inappropriate. I am now a fan of this hooking up show. <laughs> and I gotta say, I'm glad to see Chloe's gonna try to make it work with Fling Guy. I don't think it's a smart decision at all. These characters are making terrible choices, and it's a TV show. You're not supposed to imitate their behavior. Everybody knows that. You guys stay back. Danny, go in the other room. Toaster. You better be watching How to Please Your Woman videos. No, we just got a security alert. Ooh, you look fantastic. I'll let you play Connect the Dots later. <laughs> so what's the security alert? Uh, it was a smoke alarm. Yeah, because somebody here didn't uh, clean the crumbs out of the toaster like they said they did. Uh, I cleaned it out. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you did. Yeah, no, I did. It wasn't me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, it sort of seems like it does. <laughs> It's a mess in there, but at least the fire's out. That was amazing. Yeah. My nona used to fall asleep smoking, so I got pretty handy with these babies. <laughs> I'm just so glad you were here. Me too. We're all good now, um, so I guess I'm just gonna go pack. There's a bus later to Newark, and... That'll be that. <laughs> Was that a kiss for your boyfriend or a kiss just because I'm so damn irresistible? Boyfriend. You sure about that? Yeah. You're not that hard to resist. <sighs> I told you it wasn't me. In my own house. You know, it's a good thing poor Torbett's not seeing... Oh. I gotta say, amazing security system. Look, you can zoom in. No thanks. Well, we consummated, and in record time, but that does not count as official honeymoon sex. You know, actually, um, it wasn't so bad. Well, maybe next time we can do it with all of our clothes off. Yeah, I know. I, I, I just cannot believe this Marco, man. You know, hey, Uncle Joe, yeah, you're here to help out the family. Yeah, more like helping himself out. Look, I obviously have to go home and deal with this whole situation, but Mel, why don't you stay here for a couple days and just enjoy yourself? Oh, yeah, I'll just hang out here with the mosquitoes and watch the How to Check Out channel. I'm going with you. Okay, I'm gonna go get the car. Because, you know, we're in this, for better or for worse. I'm just waiting for the better part. <laughs> Marco and Lennox have been sneaking around. My own nephew, he lied to me. My niece lied to me, too. How come I'm not freaking out? I don't know. Painkillers? <laughs> built up a tolerance to those years ago. 
hours ago. It's different, okay? Marco made Lennox lie to you. Made her? What, has he got some kind of hold on her? Yes, honey, I keep telling you, all right? You are underestimating the power of a male with Longo blood. We can get a woman to do anything. Anything. The powers are limitless. Can you open the door here, please? Okay. You know, I, don't, I just think we should enjoy the beautiful night sky until your urge to murder passes. Babe, I'm telling you, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna be under control, I'm not even gonna raise my voice. Trust me. Okay. I didn't bring my keys. Grab mine, they're in my pocket. Yeah, I don't think your keys are in here. I'm sorry, I meant the other pocket. So you were just gonna let me feel around in there all day? I was. Get in there. Hey. Cool and calm? Yo. Cool and calm. Now I'm going to finish the other half. <laughs> Calmly. It's all good, all good. It's okay, okay. It's all right, all right. As far as I can see. It's all good, all good. It's okay, okay. It's all right, all right. I guess you're stuck with me. I cannot believe my own nephew lied to my face. What, do you think I wasn't gonna find out? I got one question for you, Marco, just one. Do you think I'm stupid, or are you stupid? I'm not stupid. That's two questions. <laughs> it's two, two questions. <laughs> okay, come on, Marco. We don't have to listen to this. Actually, you do. Actually, they don't, they're adults. Hey, just because you're adults doesn't mean it's right to lie to my face. You wanna punch me? Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, no, hitting him isn't gonna change the way I feel about him. I know that, but I would feel better. John, hitting doesn't solve anything, right? All right, fine, fine, no one's gonna hit anyone. Marco knows what he was doing was wrong, otherwise, why would he be keeping it a secret? I'm the one who wanted to keep it a secret. I wasn't sure about us, but now I am. Aww. Hold on! <laughs> this is, this is not an awe. It's not the worst thing in the world. I don't know. It's pretty close. <laughs> Uncle Joe, I know you think I'm just a mook from Jersey and she's out of my league, but there is nothing you can do to hold back true like. <laughs> See how I didn't say love? I know you want to take this thing slow, and I respect that. <laughs> I don't get it. What could you two possibly have in common? jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, why don't you guys give me and Joe a minute? Okay, I'm just relieved this is out in the open. Come on, Marco, we'll be up in my room. Keep your door open. I mean, close it. I mean, I don't know what I want. Joe, I think you handled that as well as you could. Yeah, it's a big victory. Lennox is upstairs in her bedroom right now with a player. Lennox is a grown woman. She's gonna do what she wants to do. Wow. I'm powerless. I am completely powerless. These guns, they... They have no firing pin. Oh, you're back. Listen, this boy asked me out on a date tomorrow night. I won't be too late. You see that? First week at a new school and Danny's already making friends. Isn't that great? It's awesome. You're not going. But I already said yes. Oh, oh, you already said yes? Oh, well, now in that case, you're not going. Why? Why? You want a reason? All right. Look, I, I actually have a very good one. Now, look, it's, it's, it's a little complicated, but um, here it is. Cause I said so. Oh, you're such a dictator! <laughs> wow. First Lennox is mad at you, now Danny. I'm sorry, Joe. You kidding? I felt great. <laughs> Firing pin is coming back. <laughs> Hey, look at this. 
The monster truck rally's in town. Ugh, can you imagine people actually go to that crap? Did I mention I welded the cage to the crush mobile at the Northeast Monster Truck Orama? And we won most bodacious. <laughs> That's impressive. Don't worry, I'm sure there's tons of things we can find to do together. Hmm. Hey, Amelia just asked if I could go to the movies with her tonight. Can you take me? Oh, happy to. Yeah, now that I got my cast off, that's the kind of wonderful thing I can do. I can also do this. <laughs> wow, now you're not just cool Aunt Mel, you're cool stepmom Mel. I am. I need to update my Twitter bio. <laughs> you are much cooler than Joe. I know, but don't tell him. He can't handle the truth. <laughs> that's a reference. Never mind. Hey, I bet there's tons of movies that we could see. Oh, yeah, of course there are. Oh, I really want to see this French film, La Tristesse de ma mère. It means the sadness of my mother. If his mother's a robot, I'm in. <laughs> but you know what I hear is also cool? Zeke the talking donkey. Check out the ad. Zeke, the dirtiest ass in Cleveland. <laughs> Get it? I wish I didn't. <laughs> Oh, okay. Maybe we should just give up, huh? What? No, 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 no. Hold on. Um, how about... How about this one? Hang the Iron Lantern. It's a documentary about a local sculptor, Thorndike Wells. He makes art, which I like, and his sculptures are made of metal, which you, as a welder, would enjoy. That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Are you lying? Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, if you're interested, I'm interested. But if that art movie sold out, the donkey movie, 3D. So when Zeke burps, your hair blows back. Oh, Thorndike Wells is such a genius. I mean, to spend three years working on that one sculpture? I don't know what he was doing all that time. Me and my boys could have that thing knocked out in a weekend. No, he was creating something of incredible symbolic complexity. Whatever. The welds sucked. Drippy, uneven. He is not getting into the union with sloppy work like that. Hey, Lennox. Xander. Uh, you know Marco. Yeah, we've met. So, uh... That's new. Oh, yeah. Well, after you broke up with me, my roommates thought it wise to hide all the razor blades. So, voila. So the movie, was that incredible or what? Yeah, I'm Thorndike Wells is a genius. Yeah. Oh, he's going to be signing copies of his book in the lobby. I know. I'm actually working up the courage to reintroduce myself to him. I had an interview with him last week uh, to be an intern in his art studio. Excuse me, I'm going to go make some art in the men's room. <laughs> if I run into Thorndike, I'll tell him what's wrong with his welds. It's a good plan. I'm sure he'll love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you two are uh, officially going out, huh? We are. Good. Good. <laughs> Question. Question. Um, when you take him to a movie like this, do you have to explain it to him in, like, little tiny words? It's not nice to talk behind someone's back. No, I know, but, you know, if I said it to his face, he'd, he'd punch me. Your dad wouldn't let you come out on a date. <laughs> my dad has no idea. Luckily, my stepmom's easy to scam. Joaquin and Dash are getting us some popcorn. They'll be right back. Oh, hiya. What are you doing here? <laughs> you were just supposed to drop me off. Oh, well, I saw the poster. I didn't know this was a Zeke movie. I love that talking donkey. You know, he really speaks his mind. Um, anyway, if it's awkward for your girlfriends to see me, I can sit a few rows back. Oh, it's... <laughs> That was weird. A totally random boy just handed me popcorn for absolutely no reason. Is this a date? No! It's a double date. Thanks! Don't tell Joe. He can't handle the truth. Did I say it right? Danny, your dad told you no dating. Yeah, but clearly that ship has sailed. I can't leave you here with these boys. That would be like lying to Joe. I've done it. It's not that hard. <laughs> Joe and I are a team. I can't go behind his back. But what about me? It'll be totally embarrassing if I just leave. 
Come on, you were 13 once. Not that long ago. Uh-huh, yeah, like I'm gonna fall for that. How long ago do you think? <laughs> My stepmom drags me out of here. The humiliating photos will be all over the internet before I leave the lobby. My life at my new school will be totally ruined. Okay, but Joe never finds out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I'll wait for you in the lobby. But when this movie gets out, you are getting a hickey check. What's a hickey? <laughs> nice try. Good morning. Hey. Danny must be uh, pretty mad at me. Kids, huh? Yeah, well, she didn't even say goodnight to me. You guys got home from the movies last night. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, her dad says she can't date, and all of a sudden, I'm a monster. That's the price you pay for being a tough parent. Yep, yep, yep. I gotta tell you, honey, it really means the world to me that you have my back on this one, because now I know you and I are truly teammates. Yep, yep, yep. And I just want to apologize in advance, because in about a minute, Danny's gonna come bounding down those stairs, and she's gonna be throwing a whole bunch of teenage attitude our way. Good morning, everyone. Did you see the sky outside? Oh, it's so beautiful. It's like a screensaver. Hashtag no filter. Hey, kiddo. How did uh, you and the girls enjoy the uh, talking donkey movie? Oh, so stupid. I loved it. <laughs> wow. You see what I did? What? I just parented the crap out of her. You know, Mel confirms what I always thought. Even with kids today, a good old-fashioned dose of vitamin N still works. Vitamin N? Yeah, the word no. Administer as needed. A pie, teammate. Yep, yep, yep. Hey. Hey. So, here are this week's drawings for Cassandra. Oh, great, thanks. You know, I'm glad that even though we broke up, we can work together on our web series. Yeah. Oh, hey, you know who else I might be working with pretty soon? I can only tell you his initials. It's renowned American sculptor Thorndike Wells. Wait, you got the internship? Well, no, not quite. It's uh, it's down to me and one other guy. Oh, well, there's no way that other dwarf is one-tenth as talented as you. You're totally getting this internship. Well, you can't be too sure, especially since the other dwarf is me. What? Excuse me, what? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> After the screening, I wound up standing beside Thorndike at the urinals. I told him what I thought of his lame pipe. <laughs> then I clarified and explained I was referring to his shoddy welds. Okay, uh, so, uh, the other guy's you. But you're, um, you're... Someone Mr. Wells said he could learn a lot from. I gotta go call my mom. She's gonna be so proud. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I can't believe he's doing this to me. Xander, he's not doing anything to you. Are you blind, Lennox? Your boyfriend is totally screwing both of us. <laughs> In very different ways. If you guys don't need any more help, I have some extra credit homework I want to get to. Oh, yeah, we can take care of the rest. You are excused. Amazing. Huh? I mean, from a single seat of discipline comes an entire forest of good behavior. And we thought we were gonna have trouble with that one. Oh, boy, were we wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, honey, I think this parenting victory calls for a little celebration. Yesterday, when I was at the hardware store, I bought a, a party bulb off the impulse rack. It's in my nightstand. Why don't you, um... Run upstairs and flip it on? Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, Dan, you left your phone on the table, sweetie. Can't wait for our next double date. Thank your cool stepmom for making it possible. Joaquin. <laughs> Dead man Joaquin. <laughs> Guys, some frozen yogurt. Why do you want to work for Thorndike Wells? Some girls would just say, I'm so lucky to have a boyfriend who brings me frozen treats. I just, I can't figure it out. Why all of a sudden someone who has no interest in art wants so badly to work for this artist? It doesn't matter anymore. Gallery just texted me, Xander got the job. You were right. 
I couldn't compete with an actual artist. Wow. You really wanted that job. But how come? I mean, you'd be a glorified gopher and you're not even interested yeah, in art. Yeah, but you are. And then maybe we'd have a little more in common. Besides that. I wasn't sure if your motives were pure. Turns out your motives were awesome. It really doesn't bother you that our interests are so different? No, of course not. And I bet with time, I could learn to love monster trucks. Really? Yes. Are you lying? Yes. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't expecting you at all, but now that you're here... Mel, before we go any further... Oh, right, I almost forgot. Uh, Janelle in zoning got really into Fifty Shades of Grey, and now she wants everyone to be as twisted as she is. And I think it would be rude not to use her secret Santa gift. Listen, honey, I appreciate all the trouble that you went to, but, um... We really need to talk. Oh, right. We cannot go any further without a safe word. How about, um, how about stepmom? Or maybe, uh, double date? Or, oh, wait a minute. Here's my favorite. My wife lied to me. This does not sound like foreplay. I told Danny she couldn't date, and you took her out to meet a boy? Okay, look, it all started very innocently. I was trapped. You know, handcuffed, if you will. And speaking of which, <gasps> what's in here? Stop it, all right? Don't distract me with your accessories, okay? And you know what? Will you take that silly mask off, please? Because I feel like I'm being hit on by Batman. Okay, look. <laughs> I didn't know that there was gonna be a boy there until after we got there. Besides, it was just a movie. Just a movie? Half my neighborhood would conceive during just a movie. So, if I dragged her out of there in front of her friends, she would have been humiliated. You were 13 once. Not as recently as me, but... <laughs> Mel, we are husband and wife. We are teammates. I understand you had to make a tough call in the heat of the moment, but why didn't you tell me afterwards? There was a very good reason. Well? Look, you know how Lennox and Marco didn't come to you when they started dating? Because they know it was wrong. Or maybe they were worried about how you'd react. I reacted fine. No one got hit. Joe, I would love it if we could set the bar a little higher than no one got hit. Hey, hey, what does Marco and Lennox have to do with us anyway? <sighs> okay. Now, if I tell you this, you promise you won't fly off the handle. <sighs> yes, honey, come on. You could tell me anything. Here goes. Okay. Joe, mm -hmm. you're not always that easy to talk to. Me? What? <laughs> that is insane. Really important for me to hear. <laughs> I do that a lot? What's a lot? Yeah, constantly. <laughs> so people are afraid to tell me things because of how I might react. That explains a lot. What? When I was a kid and my mom told me there was no Santa Claus, she had my Uncle Sal there. The cop. It was a good call. I didn't take it well. Well, Joe, I still love you. All of you, you know, even the overreacty, angry parts. It's not all anger, Mel. A lot of it is, um, fear, actually. I was afraid Lennox was gonna get hurt, and there was nothing I could do about it. Danny's even younger than that, and I gotta tell you... You were worried she'd get hurt? No, I'm worried I'm gonna be a grandfather. Thanks for letting me know that my parental concern can look a little scary at times. You're welcome. And I should have come straight out and told you what I did for Danny. So wait a minute. In other words, you were, um... Really? You're going to make me say it? I'm just saying, you know, you went to all this trouble for a romantic evening. This could really get the night going. I was... Mm -hmm. Wrong. Oh, God, that does it to me. <laughs> so wrong. Mm -hmm. Mistaken. Yeah. Incorrect. I am not withholding anything from you tonight. <laughs> so, 
I start tomorrow as Thorndike's new intern, you know, answering phone calls, running errands, plunging the occasional toilet. <laughs> Doesn't sound very glamorous, but I'm really excited. Well, I'm sure you'll be working side by side with him in his studio in no time. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, he made it very clear. Nobody touches the art but Mr. Wells. Hey, guys. Hey, babe. Oh, hey. Hey, you know, sorry about that job. Better luck next time, right? Yeah, maybe it just wasn't the job for you, but I know there will be other opportunities that fit you perfectly. That is exactly what Thorndike said when he told me I wasn't going to get that gopher job. <laughs> but then a funny thing happened. He just called and asked if I want to help out in his studio pouring metal and doing the welding. I'm going to be his new apprentice. <laughs> so you're, you're going to touch the art? You're just going to do that? His exact words were, Marco, I want you by my side as I create. <laughs> well, didn't this just work out great for everybody? <laughs>